Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISC podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. What's the low, Stan, all the way in the beginning? I know that's when the IC first started these. Was yeah, that like a um, six or a seven? Yeah, hang on one second. Way to the left there. Let me see if I can. I'll push this back a little bit, um, yeah, and see you know how far back we can go. I may run out of gas here a little bit. All right, um, whatever you can do. Yeah, back here we it's were at about going to be a low vol. Yeah, back there we were about a seven, but back in here. It went as low as five-ish? I have some readings about four. <laughs> in here okay. now, wow. uh, there are various formulas, and this is a 30-day calculation. Right. And whether it was exactly where four, four or five, right? <laughs> yep, yep. Now, and and this, by the way, to give you a benchmark on that, this is June of '07, May right. June. That was 30. sort of the that was the low point for vol, right? Yep, yep. So when we when we kind of see that volatility um, now retrenching to these levels. Um, I'll leave this as a as a rhetorical open open question um, about uh, is this is volatility now low or is volatility now where it should be? Where are we going from here? Right, it, that's the key to options trading, right, Stan? Yeah. If you exactly. think it's going lower, you should be a seller of options. If you think it's going higher, you got to be a buyer of options. Lots of strategies out there. This is really helpful, Stan. Thanks. Yeah, there's actually – I'll be to show you something as we, as we get a little deeper in um, where we'll take a look at, like, the possibility of a straddle or a strangle and what that might mean with vols the way they are. Okay. Um, so at these levels, you know, the temp, there's a temptation on my part – I can't resist this as a technical analyst – to say that volatility is finding support at these levels. Looking right. back at these – you know, looking back at – again, just look at where my crosshair drops, you know, where the right. horizontal line of my crosshair. Um, I think one could make that case, and, and it is a, um, you know, it, it's a market. We don't know which way this is going. I, I don't, uh, I'm not agreeing or disagreeing with Bob Prechter in his latest call. Right. Um, but, but it is kind of interesting to see that we've, we've come back to this level, and if, if the new world is somewhere in here, we may very well see. Uh, uh, if, if, if vol trades back to 15, that would be roughly – here, where my horizontal is, right there. Right. How big a difference is that? Okay. At any rate, um, I wanted to take a look at that on the uh, euro. Um, I'm going to click through a couple of these major pairs just so we can see a little bit more about them. Um, I'm just using that. I'm just using my little radar screen window here to, as a little control panel, just to click these through. And you can take a look at the same idea. What I invite you to look at, and I don't know if we have to go all the way back. We can try and scroll oh. back. But is this idea of, okay, certainly it has come off. And, and where does that put us vis-a-vis -vis some longer histories? Now, we don't have very long histories in these. We don't have 10- and 20-year histories. Uh, there's only so long that they've been, they've been traded and we have public information on them. But it is kind of interesting that we are back to those levels and where we might be. So take a look at those. Where were we historically? What was that big run-up? Where have we retraced to vis-a-vis -vis these historical levels? We took a look at euro. That's sterling that you're looking at now. Um, here's yen. A little bit of a different animal. Maybe we can relate it to the fundamentals of the Japanese economy and how they were or weren't involved in certain things, certain carry aspects. I won't, I won't guess on that at the moment. And Look at then, that peak, though, Stan. That's amazing. Isn't that remarkable? Yeah. Now, you know. that, that peak, again, um, it's roughly the same highlighted there, which is in the midst of that peaking period, December 2nd of 08. Right. So, so it's interesting because uh, I guess equity, if you want to define it as VIX, uh, you know, index fall, probably peaked in, I don't know, I can't remember if it was February or something like that. Um, I think it was later than this. I think yen actually peaked first, so I don't know what that all means, but 
you you putting that up real soon? Yeah, it'd be uh, interesting to see. It, it was exact. It was even in my notes to do that. I want to put it up, uh, make it a little easier to see. So let me just make it a little heavier line and throw it in and see if we can see that. Okay. So now here's the VIX. So these are the U.S. equity markets, guys. So you know we're looking at that. Yeah. So that the, the the peak was actually in terms of the yen was pretty concurrent. Right, go, that's what I thought it was. The yen has been a nice uh, surrogate for VIX. Uh, I read some articles on this. Obviously, things change, correlations change, and that's up to all of us to decide. But it's not, you know, for those of us that are first on a trend, you're going to probably earn some nice money. And of course, if you're wrong, you got to try to uh, manage it. But that's interesting, Stan. I, that's what I thought that uh, was pretty close to VIX. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll cycle through these again real quick now that we threw the VIX up there. So there's. There's Euro. Remember this brown one in the middle here is VIX. And then here's volatility on uh, statistical on the Euro. Right. So actually, um, in a sense, uh, VIX hit its peak first. I, um, I don't know if splitting hairs. Is and then it tried now. again, right? Yep, yep. Here's uh, Sterling once more. Remember the middle one, that, that copper-colored yep. one? So actually, VIX was, did not actually rally back. How about the Canadian? Yeah, and here's Canada. That's the one we didn't look at yet. And Canada was kind of interesting, of course, because Canada. Look at that. A, yep. Canada had a con very interesting. Concurrent. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I, Canada is is um, is financial as well as commodity. Right. So it, it's Ow. kind of interesting, just how much that that blowout was. I mean, look at the nature of that move. That was just enormous. Relation seems pretty tight. I mean, obviously, you could do some more studies, but just by the eye, that looks like it's, uh, man, they, they move almost lock step there. Yeah, it's very, very tightly correlated. Um, that, that was actually, that crosshair is the peak in VIX. <laughs> wow. And I think I got two days later without without even, wow. I could look exactly two or three days later was the peak in the, in, uh, Very interesting. Involved. Wow. Yeah. Um, take a look at. Um, stay with me one second. Um, still trying to recover some data. So if you see me moving over to this to this other uh, this other chart as I'm trying to you know push something through here and I'm not I'm not quite getting that file. So you'll have to have me back. Uh, you have to put up with me again. Um, oh, definitely. You're always welcome back, Stan. Well, thanks. Um, one of the things that I was taking a look at, and, and again, trade station users are, are, are used to doing this. Um, you know, you're welcome to do this. And, and I didn't do an extensive mock-up of this. I just did a, a quick chart. And it, it relates to what I was just mentioning about, about commodities and, and, um, and Canada. And, and I put up the, the gold ETF, GLD. Mm, nice. And in the lower subgraph, what you see, the blue line, again, is, the histor is historical volatility on a 30-day. The yellow one is the implied volatility. Mm. Now, that's the tw a 20-day average of the implied, so I smoothed it a little bit. Mm. We could debate what lengths to use, but in an academic discussion, really what we're looking at more is just, you know, uh, direction and, and sort of relative right. valuation. And if we take a look, I don't know how much history I have for this, but I can try and tighten this up a little bit. So I have some history. Uh, well, it starts to die back here on the, on the implieds. I don't know exactly when those options started trading on GLD, so I won't beg the question. But I'm trying to just to at least see a, a slice here that goes back, oh, let's say uh, a year, 14 months, Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.ise.com slash podcasts.